United States Army Basic Training, also known as Initial Entry Training (IET), is the recruit training program of physical and mental preparation for service in the United States Army, US Army Reserve, or the Army National Guard is one of the world's deepest most complex military basic training that varies greatly depending on one's chosen military occupation within the US Army. An Army infantry recruit may expect a more intense, physically demanding basic training at Fort Benning via one station unit training, while non combat occupations receiving basic training typically occurs at Fort Jackson, which emphasizes balance and basic Army customs. Carried out at several different Army posts around the United States, basic training is designed to be highly intense and challenging. The challenge comes as much from the difficulty of physical training as it does from the psychological adjustment to an unfamiliar way of life. Basic training is divided into two parts, Basic Combat Training and Advanced Individual Training 8. 8 consists of the remainder of the total basic training period and is where recruits train in the specifics of their chosen fields. As such, 8 is different for each available Army career path, or military occupational specialty 8 courses can last anywhere from 4 weeks to 7 months, and possibly more for foreign language training. Soldiers are still continually tested for physical fitness and weapons proficiency and are subject to the same duties, strict daily schedule and disciplinary rules as in BCT. Topic Overview Topic Drill Sergeants Drill sergeants are the instructors responsible for most of the recruit training that takes place in initial entry training. They accompany recruits throughout the training process, instructing and correcting them in everything from firing weapons to the correct way to address a superior and are also largely responsible for the safety of recruits. They are recognizable by their distinctive headgear campaign hats, often called brown rounds or smoky bear hats, as they resemble that character's round park ranger style hat. Topic: Battle Buddies Battle Buddies generally refer to partners in a combat scenario. However, throughout basic training the term is used to describe a disciplinary principle whereby recruits are generally prohibited from walking anywhere alone. When traveling away from the platoon or a drill sergeant, recruits are expected to travel in pairs, known as Battle Buddies. Battle buddies are sometimes assigned, or can be chosen by recruits when the need to travel arises. <laughs> <laughs> Daily schedule A typical day in basic training generally follows this schedule. Times can change depending on location, commanding officers or when drill sergeants see a need for variation. Fire guard and charge of quarters Every night, at least two recruits from the platoon must be awake at any given time, patrolling the barracks area, watching for fires, cleaning the barracks and watching for recruits attempting to leave the barracks area. They wake the next pair of recruits at the end of their one-hour shift. This duty is called fire guard. Fire guard stems back to the days of wooden barracks and wood burning stoves. The fire guard would watch the stoves to make sure that the barracks would not catch fire. 
Since open flames are not generally used to heat sleeping areas any longer, present-day fire guard during basic training is more an exercise in discipline than a practical necessity, although if the weather gets cold enough, some groups conducting overnight outdoor training will still use a kerosene pot -bellied stove which must be watched to prevent accidental fires. Charge of quarters, commonly called CQ, functions in a somewhat similar manner. CQ shifts rotate throughout the entire company, with just two recruits from the company staying awake per shift. The actual charge of quarters is the drill sergeant and the pair of recruits staying awake are the runners, meaning that they perform tasks for the CQ. They perform some of the same duties as the fire guard shift. Only the CQ on duty is permitted to open the barracks doors and the runners must alert the CQ if someone else attempts to enter or leave the barracks. <laughs> <laughs> Hands-on training For many hands-on instructional sessions, recruits are transported to other locations on post that specialize in the given subject. For instance, a class on the use of the Claymore anti-personnel land mine is given at a location where a field is already set up with the appropriate props for the simulation, including fake claymores that recruits can practice on. Classes are also given in the use of the AT-4 shoulder-fired anti-tank missile launcher. For this class, recruits are brought to a mock battlefield riddled with decommissioned tanks and other vehicles. Each recruit fires a trainer AT-4 weapon, loaded with tracer ammunition, at various targets on the battlefield. For weaponry training that involves only the use of fake weapons, one real demonstration of the actual weapon is usually performed. For example, at Claymore training one real Claymore may be rigged and remotely detonated, and at AT-4 training one recruit usually the one with the highest rifle qualification score is chosen to fire a live AT-4. Topic. Split training option The split training option also known as STO or split op is an enlistment option available for Army National Guard and Army Reserve recruits. This program allows individuals to attend basic training during one summer, drill with their respective units once a month on weekends while attending school, and then attend advanced individual training after graduation. This enlistment option is popular among high school students who want to enlist right away while still attending school. Locations The recruit's entry location in the United States, determines where the recruit will attend basic combat training if the recruit chose a non-combat support MOS. A recruit that has chosen a particular combat MOS will require specific OSUT. Infantry, military police, combat engineer advanced individual training depends on his or her chosen military occupational specialty, or MOS, which is selected upon enlistment. For a non-combat support MOS, 8 will commence following successful completion of basic training. Soldiers requiring air transportation to their training locations are flown via commercial flight at the U.S. Army's expense. Topic. One station unit training With some MOS, both the BCT and eight phases of training are accomplished back to back at the same location, with the same instructors, as well as with the same fellow recruits. This is called one station unit training, or OSUT. For example, the infantry MOS consists of BCT followed by 22 weeks of infantry training, all within the same location. 
A similar program is followed for cavalry scouts, tank crewmen, military police, field artillery and some engineer MOS. Topic: <laughs> Basic combat training sites. The US Army has four sites for BCT. Fort Benning in Columbus, Georgia, also provides infantry and armor OSUT Fort Jackson in Columbia, South Carolina, non-combat MOS Fort Leonard Wood in St. Robert, Missouri, also provides Corps of Engineers, Chemical Corps and Military Police OSUT Fort Sill in Lawton, Oklahoma, also provides Artillery OSUT Topic: Advanced Individual Training. Eight is held at the corresponding school for the recruits. Moss see Advanced Individual Training. Topic: Reception Battalion. Reception Battalion is the period that begins when the recruit arrives at the Army post where he or she is to undergo basic training. It typically lasts four to ten days and is where initial preparations for training are performed, including Haircut head shave or buzz cut for men, women must either cut hair short or wear pinned up Physical examination, including blood and urine tests, inoculations, distribution of uniforms and personal gear, such as duffel bag and mouth guard, instruction in basic marching and standing, as well as upkeep of barracks. Topic: <laughs> Fitness Training Company. The recruits who fail the physical assessment test can be held back at reception battalion, where they are placed in fitness training company FTC, sometimes referred to in slang form as, "...fat camp." FTC involves daily, rigorous physical training and diet monitoring by master fitness trainers MFTs. Recruits in FTC are given two chances each week to complete the physical assessment test and upon passing are allowed to move on to the next phase of basic training. Recruits that spend four weeks in FTC without passing the physical assessment test failing the test eight times may be discharged from the Army via an entry-level separation see discharge from basic training below. Recruits that sustain injuries during basic training, such as a broken arm, may also be assigned to a FTC for rehabilitation. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Basic Combat Training. Basic Combat Training or BCT is a 10-week training cycle that teaches identical skills for all MOS military occupational specialties. This is because the army believes that no matter the soldier's specialty, they should all be taught the same basic procedures and skill sets so they are ready to properly work together and defend themselves as well as their fellow soldiers if when necessary. BCT is divided into three phases. The three phases are each represented by a color, red, white and blue for phase 1, 2 and 3, respectively. BCT trainees are progressively allowed more responsibility, privileges and independence each time they achieve a new phase of training. Whereas trainees in Phase 1 are constantly monitored and led around by their drill sergeants, Phase 3 trainees are largely responsible for making sure tasks are completed correctly and on time and keeping themselves on schedule. At some basic training stations, the current phase is denoted by the color of guidance carried by the platoon. Following the recruit's successful completion of the field training exercise a final exercise just before graduation, the Phase 3 blue guidon is sometimes traded for a tri-color red, white and blue guidon that symbolizes successful completion of all three BCT phases. <laughs> 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 
Topic <laughs> Phase One. During Phase 1 or the ''Red Phase'', recruits are subject to ''total control'', meaning their every action is monitored and constantly corrected by drill sergeants. Recruits are often subjected to group corrective action for even minor infractions, the purpose being to develop an acute attention to detail and foster a sense of common responsibility among the unit. Topic. Week 1 Week 1 begins with the recruits meeting the drill sergeants who will be responsible for their training throughout BCT. The drill sergeants pick up their recruits from reception battalion and either transport or march them to their company area. The company area is the common area for the entire company 200 recruits and is surrounded by four barracks one for each platoon 50 recruits each in the company. Upon arrival at the company area, recruits are subjected to exercises such as the bag drill. This is a training exercise in which all the recruits' duffel bags are dumped into one large pile and the recruits are told to find their personal duffel bags simultaneously and within a set time limit. Following the bag drill, the recruits are divided into platoons. Drill and ceremony training begins during week one. This refers to correct procedures for marching and body movements such as standing at attention, facing, right face, left face, at ease, to the rear, and others. For this and many other exercises, soldiers are sometimes issued fake rifles known as rubber ducks", so that they can become familiar with the proper handling and added weight of their weapon before they have actually been trained to use it. More recently, recruits have begun to be issued fully functional M16A2, a force during the first week of BCT to allow for early familiarization with the weapon. Classroom instructions are given in each of the seven Army Corps values which include loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity and personal courage meant to spell out the mnemonic LDRSHIP, or leadership. There are also classes held on subjects that involve day-to-day -day personal life in the Army, such as sexual harassment awareness, prevention and race relations. Week 2 During week 2, recruits begin unarmed combat training, also known as hand-to-hand -hand combat, combatives or ground fighting technique GFT. The training often culminates in a competition where each platoon chooses one recruit to compete. At gender-integrated training stations, the platoons each choose one male and one female. Recruits are also instructed in map reading, land navigation and compass use. These skills are put to the test at the compass course, where recruits are divided into groups and must navigate their way to a series of points throughout a wooded area. Recruits will also tackle Victory Tower and the Teamwork Development course during Week 2. Victory Tower is an exercise where recruits must navigate through several obstacles at extreme heights, including climbing and traversing rope ladders and bridges. They must then rappel down a 50-foot wall back first, with rope harness. In the teamwork development course, squads must navigate a series of obstacles, with emphasis on working as a team rather than as individuals. First aid training, known as Combat Life Saver CLS, is also given during this period. Recruits are trained in evaluating and properly treating casualties, ranging from dressing a wound to application of a tourniquet and dehydration treatment. Week 3 
Recruits begin training with pugil sticks, methods for carrying an unconscious or immobile person and physical problem solving, such as finding a way to carry equipment from point A to point B given specific obstacles and constraints. Recruits are also commonly sent to a gas chamber during this week, which is a large, sealed chamber where soldiers are subjected to CS gas while wearing their protective masks. The gas chamber is the culmination of a series of classroom instructions on gas mask use. Recruits are forced to unmask just before exiting the chamber so that they can briefly experience the effects of the gas. Drill sergeants will usually ask each recruit to recite information while they are unmasked, such as name, social security number or the Pledge of Allegiance, so that the recruit is forced to open their mouth, eyes and or take a breath while demonstrating continued focus. Week 3 is also when the recruits are introduced to the standard issue weapon, the M16A2 assault rifle or the M4 carbine. This does not yet involve the actual firing of the rifle. It does include basic rifle marksmanship BRM fundamentals training instruction in marksmanship techniques without firing the rifle. For instance, trigger control is practiced by placing a wooden dowel down the barrel of the rifle with a coin placed on the exposed end. If the recruit can pull the trigger without the coin falling from the dowel, their trigger control is satisfactory, as well as maintenance tasks, including field stripping, quickly disassembling, cleaning, and reassembling the rifle. Many of these tasks are now done during week one as a part of the initial round of classroom instruction. Phase 2 Phase 2, or the white phase, is where soldiers begin actually firing weapons. With the service rifle M16A2, they will fire at various targets, which are progressively further downrange, making each successive target more difficult to hit, with additional pop-up targets at long range. Other weapons the soldier becomes familiar with include various hand grenades such as the M67, grenade launchers such as the M203 and machine guns such as the M240, M249 and M2. The second week of phase 2 involves familiarization with anti-tank armor weaponry and other heavy weapons. There is also an obstacle course which the soldiers are expected to negotiate within a certain time limit, known as the confidence course, since the main objective is to build self-confidence. There is also the expectation of working as a team with the assigned battle buddy. Additionally, there is continual, intense physical training as well as drill and ceremony training. At the conclusion of Phase 2, soldiers are expected to demonstrate proficiency with the various weaponry in which they trained, using numerous go or no go, pass, fail exercises prior to being allowed to move on to Phase 3. <laughs> phase 3 Phase 3, or the Blue phase is the culmination and possibly the most challenging of all the training phases. During this phase, an Army physical fitness test is administered to determine whether the recruit has successfully met the requirements for graduation. Although not previously mentioned, an APFT is given at a minimum at every phase of training. This is conducted to ensure that all recruits are meeting the standard along the way. Recruits failing to meet the standard of the APFT will be locally retrained by their drill sergeants and a specialized fitness program is developed to focus on the recruits' weaknesses while continuing to maintain and improve upon those events the recruit has successfully passed. When a recruit has successfully passed the APFT, the recruit will have one of the critical benchmark requirements for graduation. At some locations, soldiers who fail are not allowed to go into the field with the rest of the platoon. 
The final APFT test consists of the standard Army annual APFT examination. A minimum of 180 points is required to pass U.S. Army basic training. Those who pass will move on to bivouac camping and FTX field training exercises, such as nighttime combat operations and moot military operations in urban terrain training. There is no access to the dining facility during these exercises, so meals are given in the form of either MREs meal ready to eat or field chow. Drill sergeants will make much of this in adversarial process, working against the recruits in many of the night operations by trying to foil plans, etc. Other BCT companies also in their FTX weeks may join in simulated combat scenarios, generally at night, with intense competition to prove their particular company the better trained. Week 2 of Phase 3 the eighth week of basic training culminates in a special tactical FTX during which the drill sergeants will advise, but allow recruit platoon leaders and squad leaders to exercise primary decision making. They attempt to make virtually every one of these exercises different. Because being a soldier is potentially an extremely hazardous job, recruits must demonstrate extreme aggression and fearlessness, tempered by intelligence and common sense. Only those that demonstrate these vital attributes will be permitted to move on to eight advanced individual training. Following their FTX, recruits then move into the final week of training, often called recovery week. At this time, soldiers must service and or repair any items they are not taking on to eight including weapons, bedding, issued equipment, helmet, canteen, gas mask, etc. as well as ensuring the platoon barracks is in good order to receive the next platoon of trainees. This week also includes a final fitting of the recruit's dress uniform as well as practice for the graduation ceremony, which takes place at the end of the cycle. <laughs> Advanced individual training Advanced individual training, or eight, is where new soldiers receive specific training in their chosen MOS. The length of eight training varies depending on the MOS and can last anywhere from four weeks to nearly a year. Just like in BCT, eight progressively allows trainees more privileges and independence. Trainees begin eight in phase four. After a varying length of time and satisfactory performance, trainees are awarded phase five. Phase five often includes the privilege of applying for off post passes or use of electronic devices. Phase five plus is awarded after a set length of time and continued good conduct. Phase 5 plus trainees may walk about the base without having a battle buddy present, be able to drink alcohol on weekends provided one is of legal drinking age and even stay off post overnight on weekends. These privileges vary. <laughs> Eight schools Eight schools include not a complete list. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Discharge from basic training. A recruit can be discharged from the army before the conclusion of basic training. Discharges that occur before the completion of 180 days approximately six months of training are considered uncharacterized, which are neither honorable nor less than honorable. An entry-level separation else can occur when a recruit demonstrates unsatisfactory performance and or misconduct. A recruit can only be elsed after at least four weeks of training and two counseling sessions, except under extreme circumstances, such as the recruit being deemed suicidal. If it is found that a recruit is unable to train due to a chronic medical condition, he or she may obtain a medical discharge by the recommendation of an army medical doctor. 
a discharge due to any condition existing prior to service may occur when a recruit is found to have a prior medical condition existing before enlistment. A recruit may receive a rare honorable discharge for an EPTS condition if they have been in basic training for more than 180 days. See also Basic training, initial military training Recruit training Recruit Training Command, Great Lakes, Illinois United States Air Force Basic Military Training United States Coast Guard Training Center Cape May, New Jersey United States Marine Corps Recruit Training <laughs>